In the weather today, one final round of Arctic air sweeps through the Corn Belt region, and then tropical moisture returns to the south. Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab, but first let's look at today's world weather extremes. The world's hot spot is in northwestern Australia, Telfer, 114 degrees, a 1970s era mining town. It's a town so remote that in 1996, the mining company began flying their workforce in and out from Perth, since skilled workers normally don't want to live in such a remote location. The cold spot is in Siberia, minus 70, at Yurti. And I can't find much about this station. I believe it's just an automated river gauge location. And there's certainly no street view around there, so I'll give you the Magadan-Yakutsk road just to the north. Let's take a look at the surface map for this afternoon. We've got another chunk of Arctic air moving through Minnesota and Wisconsin. Strong cold air advection through the northeastern U.S. into the Midwest. And that cold front has advanced into Florida. Cold air also moving south along the Texas Gulf Coast, and the back end of the front stacked up against the Rockies. And on the west coast, conditions starting to go downhill again as the Pacific storm track becomes active. The North American jet stream level chart shows zonal flow developing out there in the eastern Pacific. 150-170 knot flow off of California and troughing on the west coast. We have a ridge extending from Arizona up to Washington and British Columbia and troughing in the eastern U.S. associated with that fresh outbreak of Arctic air. 150-170 knot flow across Virginia that marks the location of the polar front jet. And we will be heading into a split flow pattern as we go into next week. Just a quick look through the weekend. You can see that the pattern is progressive. We're developing this southern branch from Los Angeles to Georgia and the Carolinas and this northern branch across the prairies and the Hudson Bay region. Strong flow develops on the California coast. We see troughing by Tuesday across the southwestern U.S. And this broad area of troughing advances into the central U.S. by Wednesday. Deep southerly flow gets established in the Gulf Coast region. And as we get to the end of next week, the pattern becomes highly meridional. And looking at the precipitable water, we can see very high amounts off the California coast in excess of one inch. And some very healthy moisture lurking to the south, waiting to be brought northward as return flow gets reestablished. Revisiting today's patterns, let's look around different regions of the U.S., the northeast with a strong cold advection and northerly flow with bands of snow from Philadelphia to Charleston, West Virginia. Cold air advection also through the southeastern U.S. Northwest flow up to 25 to 30 knots. The south central U.S. under the axis of the ridge. The north central U.S. with cold air advection, clouds, and a few snow flurries. The southwestern U.S. with increasing clouds and moisture and the northwestern U.S. with the remnants of Arctic air still hanging on across Spokane, the Dalles, and Yakima. There's the visible imagery at the Sour with lots of snow on the ground. It can be hard to pick out the cloud forms, but we do see cirrus across Pennsylvania and New York. We pick up some middle and low cloud extending from eastern Indiana through the Appalachians and off into Delaware and New Jersey. And of course, there are some heavier snow and snow showers within that overcast. The infrared imagery does show a lot of obscuration from middle and high cloud, so it's kind of hard to see the details in the lower levels. That's where radar and surface obs become important. And yes, you can see extensive snow across the entire area from Rhode Island, western Massachusetts, all the way to the Great Lakes. Lake effect snows. Those are coming down hard in parts of New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. We've got winter storm warnings through Sunday from Erie to Cleveland. Two to six inches of snow possible tonight, then three to seven inches 
tomorrow with those strong northwesterly winds. In the Allegheny Mountains of Pennsylvania and western Virginia, winter storm warning through early Saturday could see 4 to 7 inches in that. And then we've got this other winter storm warning from Philadelphia to Baltimore, looking for about 4 to 6 inches within that particular region. And across a very wide area, we've got winter weather advisories all the way back to western Ohio, down into Kentucky, and as far south as Knoxville, where they're getting some snow at this time. And on this backside here around Ohio, looking for about 2 to 3 inches through tomorrow and tapering down to very little in Kentucky. These are mostly light snow showers. The southeastern U.S., very brisk today, temperatures in the 30s and 40s. We have winter weather advisories, as mentioned, in the Knoxville area and the Blue Ridge Mountains. Could see 1 to 5 inches in the mountains. And then we've got freeze warnings and advisories all the way from northern Florida, southern Georgia, Alabama, all the way back to Louisiana and east Texas. Here's the official forecast lows for tonight from the National Digital Forecast Database. They're looking for 29 degrees at New Orleans. They do have a freeze warning there. Freeze warnings all the way back to Houston. The Woodlands and Conroe looking for temperatures possibly down to 20. In Texas, the cold air continues to stream south. The freeze line running from about Abilene to north of DFW. Down south, warmer conditions, but they do have a freeze watch tonight in parts of South Texas, basically in this area from Zapata to Falfurias and Hebronville. Further north, those freeze warnings around Houston. And then heading up into Kansas, we get into some bitterly cold air once again. Single digits in Nebraska. And it is going to be a cold night there as well, especially around Omaha, Sioux Falls, and Des Moines. Could be approaching daily records in those cities. In the southwestern states, fair in most locations, hanging on to some mid and high cloud in the interior of California. But as you head out to the coast, we've got that intense warm invection, those high precipitable waters supporting showers. And do we have any lightning? Let's take a look. Yes, a few specks of lightning showing up. I guess that'd be west of Monterey. There's the infrared imagery, so we are pumping that moisture northward. One inch precipitable water filtering into San Francisco this evening and into Los Angeles tomorrow morning. And in the northwestern U.S., quite cloudy, but off of Vancouver Island, we have another wound up low. That's moving mostly to the north. Some freezing rain advisories have been posted this morning around Vancouver. Those have shifted inland. But freezing rain advisories continue into Prince Rupert and Bella Bella. That's way off the top of the map. In Washington, just winter weather advisories in the interior, looking for snow through tonight. And there's the weather picture up north. You can see that one system there with freezing rain along the coast. Not a whole lot of cold air in the Northwest Territories until you get up into the high Arctic. That's how the temperatures look at this hour, just minus 10 to minus 20 in most locations. But we will be redeveloping that cold air once again as we get into early next week. But that will be heading mostly to the southeast and to Quebec. So what we will be concerned with is the moisture. And let's look at the loop from the GFS showing that moisture tongue tracking into Los Angeles for tomorrow morning. And take a look down off the Texas coast, because as we get into Sunday, we're really going to moisten up. There comes one and a half into Houston and another surge coming in for Tuesday. OK, and let's take a look at our dynamics. Channeled flow through the Midwest associated with that cold air ridging out west. And this is where our weather is going to come from for next week. You're going to see this area of troughing and height falls built into the western U.S., a series of medium-scale troughs moving through Arizona, California, Nevada, and gradually into the Rockies. A couple strong waves move through the flow, 
And by the time we get into the middle of the week, some very strong height falls across the four corners into Texas. So this will be kind of an active period coming up for mid and late next week. Some strong ridging on the west coast. And of course, anytime we have strong northerly flow in the central plains, we have to be on guard for cold air to come south. So let's take a look at that forecast going into tonight. That high pressure just continues building into the Corn Belt. By tomorrow morning, it is going to be a cold one. The high centered on eastern Nebraska could be down to minus 18 at Omaha and minus 22 at Sioux Falls. And I'll give you this graphic. This is not the lows, but this is the 6 a.m. conditions tomorrow morning from the GFS. So this is not from the digital forecast database, not from human forecasters. That'll give you a general idea where the cold air is and the core of it right there over the Platte River around Sioux City, Iowa. And just for good measure, this is how it looks in the south. And the Weather Service has undercut some of these values with the official forecast. They're looking for 19 at Dallas, 13 at Little Rock, and as we mentioned, 29 at New Orleans. Then going into Saturday afternoon, those lake effect snows continue for one more day. Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Erie, and Ontario. Lots of clouds up and down the Appalachians. And the ridging, that's going to be the axis from Dallas to Minneapolis. The ridging is important because when it shifts over your area, that typically brings the cold weather to a close. You can see on the other side, warm advection, building that return flow, and it is going to be a windy day in parts of the plains. You can see by Saturday evening up to 20 to 25 knots from about Elkhart, Kansas, up to North Platte. Then by midday on Sunday, yeah, back here around noon, seeing about 30 knots, actually, yeah, it's 30 knots, from Woodward up to Dodge City and possibly Wichita as well. So as we go into Saturday night, one more night of cold weather for the north central U.S. Des Moines looking at minus 13, Chicago minus 4, Louisville minus 1, and Nashville 3 degrees. And you can see conditions going downhill in California. We've got a winter storm watch for the Sierras late Sunday through late Monday, mostly above 7,000. Could be 1 to 3 feet in the mountains with that very high precipitable water. Lots of tropical moisture funneling into the eastern side of the state, getting those orographics going. And we even have a flood watch in the northern San Joaquin Valley, basically in this, this region right there. That goes from late Sunday into Monday. Then going into the remainder of Sunday, the main weather disturbance heads into Arizona. We get some snows in the Painted Desert and the Mogollon Rim and development of this weather system south of Texas and increasing isentropic flow through the state. So it's going to become quite rainy there in Texas going into Monday. And there's one of the main systems arriving in California. Meanwhile in Texas, heavy rains. The Weather Prediction Center going for a slight risk of excessive rainfall around Houston, Beaumont, on up to Lufkin. And the Pacific Storm Track just continues. More rain across California. This next system arrives in Texas sometime on Tuesday into early Wednesday and very significant southerly flow on the Gulf Coast. Morning lows are going to be near 60 degrees at New Orleans Wednesday morning. And we continue that pattern into Thursday, just kind of a stagnant weather pattern in the southeast. We see one Alberta clipper coming south on Thursday, but it just folds into the back of that system in the Gulf. This next weather system by Saturday starting to clear out Texas and we get some strong cold air advection. The 540 decameter thickness line coming into Oklahoma City. And that's going to be the last chart that I have. Not much to look at. Just this coastal system with very little snow in the northeast. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our Patreon supporters. 
as well as the people who have picked up a book at weathergraphics.com. That's my own site. All the products ship from right here. And I've got forecast titles on there. I've got forecasting tools such as Digital Atmosphere. I use that every issue of WeatherWise, where I have a column in the back of the magazine and in IFR. So it's a great program. Consider picking that up. And of course, as I mentioned, the forecasting book titles. So take a look at that and see if any of that works for you. All right, we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great Friday night and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.